Okay, so today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the importance of financial planning for small businesses. Here is the content of this presentation. So first, uh, we'll go through a short, in, short introduction where we can learn more about uh, financial planning. Then understanding uh, the business and uh, how this can help in uh, building uh, financial planning. Then setting financial goals, forecasting and budgeting, which are quite similar to each other. And we will have some examples uh, where you can better understand uh, the importance of financial planning. So here uh, we have a definition of what financial planning for businesses, regardless of uh, whether they are small or big businesses. So it is the process of creating a financial roadmap for the business. So what does this mean? This means that it will include and analyze the current financial situation, setting financial goals and developing strategies on how to achieve these goals. So it basically helps owners manage their finances effect effectively and also achieve their business goals. So before starting to make a financial plan, it is un very important to understand uh, the business. What does this mean? This means that we have to track what kind of uh, business model we are dealing with. The business model refers to the way in which a company generates revenue and earns a profit. For example, if one business model relies on high volume sales with low margins, then it, it, it may be necessary to focus on minimizing costs in order to maximize profits. So what does it mean to have high volume sales with low margins? This means that the company has low gross profit. So that's why we need to focus on minimizing costs in order to generate and even maximize profit. Another important task is to identify the products and services that the business provides. So this is very important in order to understand the products and services that your business offers because this is then related to identifying the costs associating with producing or delivering these products and services. So this will tackle not uh, just reducing the expenses, but also to increase the profits. And lastly, to identify the target uh, market. This includes all the groups or people and uh, potential consumers that are interested in the products and services that the business offers. After understanding the characteristics of the business, then we can set financial goals. Financial goals uh, may be short-term and long-term. Uh, usually we refer to short-term financial goals the goals that we uh, are planning to achieve within uh, one year. While the long-term goals are those that take longer than one year in order to be achieved. Another important step is to set what we call SMART goals. These goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So I included here an example of a SMART goal, which is uh, the goal to increase 10% of sales in the next six months by launching a new marketing campaign. So we can see that this example is a short-term goal because we are waiting 
to achieve something or some results within six months. After setting financial goals, we can move to forecasting, which is uh, crucial to uh, all kinds of businesses. So financial forecasting include uh, planning for the future sales, expenses, profits, which are crucial to developing financial plan that will support and uh, support the owners to achieve their business goals. By forecasting, we can identify challenges and opportunities to develop strategies in order to address them. Furthermore, forecasting can also help us to make informed decision about investments in areas such as inventory, staffing, and marketing. Uh, this uh, forecasting can be also uh, very important to uh, see whether we will need extra cash in the future. So we can like apply for new loans and so on. Here are some uh, steps that we can uh, follow in order to do the forecasting. This will include sales forecasting, expense forecasting, and profit forecasting. We will see some examples in order for you to better understand the forecasting process. Okay, so uh, there are several methods that we can use to forecast sales and then incorporate sales forecasting in the overall forecasting. We can use first historical data, which I can say that are widely used in order to forecast sales. And uh, this includes taking into account sales data of the past. And then we use these data to do predictions about the future. For example, we can use the data of the past few years uh, in order to forecast the sales of this year. Then we can do market research. And this includes gathering data about uh, the target market and using it to estimate uh, potential sales. Then we can also check industry trends. And this will give us like a broad understanding of the trends within uh, the industry where our business belongs, and then to use them to, you, to estimate future sales. And also we can create a sales forecast for our business based on the previous steps that we have followed. Here is an example of sales forecasting. Assuming that you own a retail store that is selling clothing. And we want to create a sales forecast for the next three months so that we can plan inventory and marketing strategy. To create the sales forecast, we might first look at the historical data of the same quarter in the previous years. For example, if last year you sold 1,000 units per month during this quarter at an estimate price of $50 per unit, this means, according to historical data, that we would expect $150,000 for this quarter. Nevertheless, as I mentioned earlier, this is not uh, all the information that we must take into consideration because we might consider also other factors that could impact the sales. 
For example, you might uh, take into account increased demands for certain products due to a change in fashion or seasonal factors or any upcoming holidays. On the other hand, we might also consider that we expect lower sales due to an increase in competition or other macroeconomic factors such as recession. So we can adjust then sales that we predicted in the previous step like follows. For example, we might uh, expect to sell 1,200 units per month at the same uh, price. So for expected sales of uh, 108,000 euros, uh, dollars, excuse me, for the quarter. Or alternatively, uh, we can adjust the sales uh, due to increased competition and say that we will not sell the plant units, but we will say, sell 900 euros, 900 units per month with $50 uh, per unit. And we expect the total sales to be $135,000 for the quarter. So basically when we take into account the changes in the market, and also historical data, the changes in the industry or competition and all macroeconomic factors, we can come to a more precise sales forecasting. We move now to uh, expense forecasting, which is another part of the overall forecasting. And here we have some key factors that uh, we consider. First, we identify fixed and variable expenses. I'm sure you heard of them. Uh, fixed expenses are expense, is expenses that we expect to be the same uh, for at least some period of time, such as rent, fixed salaries for employees and so on while variable expenses are expenses that may change from month to month, such as utilities, inventories, and so on. And we also might have expenses that uh, are like uh, what-if scenarios, uh, like uh, legal expenses, or something that uh, we uh, didn't plan or didn't see coming. Okay, so based on this information, we can create an expense forecast for the business. Uh, to create this forecast, we will need to estimate the total cost of each expense over a given period of time. This can be done on a monthly basis, quarterly or yearly basis. For fixed expenses, it is, uh, easier to, to forecast them because since they don't change over a given period of time, so it is quite straightforward how we can uh, get the total amount of, the, of these costs. While for uh, variable expenses, uh, we may need to consider them in more detail and uh, more carefully plan plan them. Here is an example of expense forecasting. Assuming that you own a coffee shop and you want to create a expense forecast for the next uh, three months. So you can plan your budget and also the cash flow. So first you consider uh, the fixed expenses, which in this case is rent, fixed salaries for employees, and fixed costs of utilities per month. In this example, these total costs add up to uh, $15,000 for the, the quarter. 
And then uh, you would like to estimate also the variable expenses like inventory, marketing expenses, and other supplies. So uh, you make a budget and you uh, expect to spend an average 500 Euro, $500 per week on inventory. And this adds up to uh, $6,000 uh, over the quarter. And you do the same with uh, marketing and promotion and also on other supplies that are usually needed for uh, the coffee shops. So then you would, uh, get, you, you would get the total variable costs and your total fixed costs, which would end up to $22,500 for this quarter that we have chosen. However, again, just like when we were planning uh, sales, still we need to consider other factors that could impact expenses. For example, uh, you might uh, get higher costs for inventories if you plan to make changes in the menu or uh, you have uh, higher prices for the products from, that you uh, buy from your suppliers. So similarly, you would need to adjust again uh, the expense uh, forecasting. And lastly, uh, also it, quite important it is to uh, forecast the profit. And uh, here we can divide uh, between uh, gross profit calculation and net profit. Gross profit is basically uh, the revenues uh, minus the cost of goods sold. So this is basically the amount uh, that is left to cover all the other costs. While the net profit is the revenues minus all expenses, including fixed and variable expenses. So uh, in order to uh, create a profit forecast for your business, you will need to take into account the revenues that you plan to generate uh, for a given period. Again, this can be done in quarterly basis, monthly basis, or yearly basis. And then you subtract uh, the estimated uh, expenses, but for the same period. For example, if you are planning uh, to do a profit uh, forecast for six months, then you will have to uh, consider expenses for the same period. Here is an example of uh, profit forecasting. Uh, assuming that you have a small uh, online retail store and your revenues for the next quarter is estimated to be $50,000 and the cost of goods sold is $20,000 and pay attention that this difference would give you the cross profit we just talked about. And then you will have to consider also uh, fixed expenses, including rent salaries and uh, variable expenses, such as marketing, website maintenance, shipping costs, and so on. And then uh, we can calculate the gross profit by subtracting uh, the cost of goods sold from the revenues or the net profit by subtracting all expenses from the revenues. So then you will uh, come to the result that the profit forecast for the quarter is $15,000. So basically these are uh, the steps that one has to follow in order to uh, 
get an overall uh, forecast, financial forecast for their business. And uh, since we are talking about uh, small businesses today, it is like also examples are quite uh, easy to understand. And uh, I have taken into account numbers that are useful, I would say, uh, to better understand uh, this um, forecasting process. Before I move to budgeting, I would like to ask if someone has a question or uh, something that uh, didn't understand until now. Use the emoji reaction, the hand in reaction to to participate, or you can write on the chat any question you have. Yes. Uh, for me, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so, what are the most effective methods of managing and mitigating any financial risk that can impact uh, the sales? or the expenses or the profit, like the market volatility, the competition, like you said, or la, like the recession? Well, I would say that it depends on the weight of each of the factors that you mentioned. For example, is if the recession is uh, quite significant, then of course it will affect the sales or if the competition has increased and we have like a more serious competitor that is affecting us, then uh, we can wait also that the sales will be affected. So uh, basically it depends on the nature of the business and it also depends on these, uh, the seriousness of these uh, uh, factors that uh, you just mentioned. So I, I, I cannot say that this or that will, will, will do the, like, uh, the most impact on the sales. Uh, that's why financial planning is a process, is an ongoing process that uh, uh, someone has to, to, to uh, monitor and forecast all the time and adjust it in order to uh, not come to a situation where uh, there are like a serious uh, shorts in cash. Okay, thank you. Uh, do anyone else have a question by, right now? If not, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. So I will continue with the budgeting. Uh, budgeting is a process of creating a financial plan for a given period. This can be done in, in a monthly basis, quarterly basis, or yearly basis. And the budgeting takes into account the revenues, expenses, and uh, any investments, strategies, or saving goals that a business might have. So importance of but budget, budgeting is uh, particularly important for small businesses because it is a tool uh, that helps business to track and achieve their financial goals. Uh, by creating a budget, business owners can plan uh, and manage cash flows, can identify areas where expenses can be reduced, can make important decision about investments in various areas such as marketing, inventory, and personnel, make uh, measures of their progress towards achieving their financial goals. Uh, this can be done uh, by uh, comparing budgeting, budgeting with the actuals or actual numbers that uh, uh, business is uh, generating. 
and also to prepare for unexpected expenses or changes in the market, which we just mentioned that are uh, particularly important. So before creating a budget, uh, we uh, should consider uh, some of the key elements and steps that we need to follow. So uh, to create a budget, uh, one will need to estimate expected revenues for a given period. This period uh, depends on whether we need a budget for a year, for a month, for a quarter. And then also take into account all the estimated exp expenses for uh, the same period. And that's, then uh, we will uh, come to a net income. So uh, all the changes that uh, we need to make or uh, the adjustments that we need to make will then reflect to the net income. Here is an example of how to create a budget. So we first uh, take into account the revenues and then the cost of goods sold, and then all the fixed and variable expenses that uh, we mentioned earlier. And then uh, we uh, deduct from the revenues all the costs and we come to the net income. I have included here uh, the expenses that are the usual expenses, I would say, for a small business, like cost of goods sold, salaries, rent, utilities, such as electricity costs, phone, telephone costs, and so on, office supplies, marketing, insurance, and this would give a total amount of expenses. Okay, so I'll move on to the cash flow management, uh, which is a process of monitoring and managing the cash flows uh, into and out of the business. So basically, it takes into account uh, all the money that comes into the business and all the money that goes out of the business. Uh, this will include managing accounts receivable, accounts payable, inventory, and other financial assets and liabilities. Just so that you better understand, accounts receivables are uh, short-term assets that uh, we expect uh, to convert into cash within a short period of time usually one year. Then we have accounts payable, which we consider that are uh, short uh, liabilities because we expect to pay them within um, one year. This is particularly uh, accounts receivable and payable are particularly important in order to prepare for the cash flow. So cash flow is management is critical for small businesses because it helps them understand their current cash position. This is particularly important to consider whether we would need additional cash in the future or not. To take into account future needs for cash and potential shortfall false to manage accounts receivable and accounts payable to ensure that the cash is available when needed. So this means that uh, we receive uh, money from the sales that we made and also we have enough cash in order to meet our short-term uh, liabilities. Also cash flow management is important to uh, make us uh, uh, make better decision about investments in the area such as inventory, equipment, or personnel. 
and to identify areas where expenses can be reduced or revenues can be increased and prepare for unexpected expenses or changes in the market. Uh, so basically all of these will uh, have influences on the net income that uh, we just saw. Here is an example of how uh, cash flow management is made. For example, you have a retail store that sells uh, clothing and uh, you receive uh, money from the sales that you made on cash, on credit cards, and online sales. So, uh, you, so you have like three channels to uh, collect uh, the money that from your sales. And you have exp expenses including rent, salaries, inventories, and uh, marketing and other utilities. So in order to uh, manage the cash flow effectively, you will need to consider, first you will have to consider the cash inflows. So this will uh, involve uh, like uh, monitoring uh, daily credit card and cash sales, as well as online sales in order for you to make sure that you have collected like uh, all the cash from the sales. And uh, you will also need uh, to uh, monitor other sources of cash, like uh, loans and investments. Uh, because of course, the cash flow from the sales is not the only form uh, to, uh, or not the only source of cash inflows. Apart from monitoring uh, cash inflows, it is important also to monitor your cash outflows. This will involve tracking uh, expenses, such as uh, rent salaries, marketing expenses, and so on. Uh, and also other cash outflows, such as equipment purchases and loan payments. Because as I said, uh not the cash inflows and the outflows are not just about uh, accounts payable and accounts receivable but also for other sources of uh, cash inflows and cash outflows based on this we can forecast the need for the cash we can use historical data of uh, sales and expenses or we can uh, generate a cash flow forecast that estimates your expenses, uh, expected uh, cash inflows and outflows for a given period of time. Uh, this would help us to know uh, whether we have enough cash in hand or we need to uh, search and uh, see other alternatives to uh, generate cash inflows. While uh, it is also important to uh, manage uh, the cash receivables and cash payables uh, in order to uh, ensure that we have, uh, like customers have paid all the bills uh, towards us and we on the other hand have enough cash to uh, meet our short-term liabilities towards our suppliers. Here are some uh, cash planning tools, uh, which uh, businesses can use and uh, which are very useful for small businesses that we are talking about today. One of them is spreadsheets uh, that I'm sure some of you have already used. And uh, spreadsheets uh, such as Microsoft, Excel, and Google Sheets 
uh, can be used to track financial data and also to create budgets and forecasting plans for uh, revenues and expenses. These can be adjusted to um, meet uh, the business's needs. And uh, also uh, all that we have mentioned until now can be done using the spreadsheets. Uh, apart from the spreadsheets, uh, businesses might use also accounting softwares. I have included here a QuickBooks, which is widely used, and also Xero. Uh, these can help manage uh, financial transactions, but also create uh, invoices and uh, financial statements and generate financial reports such as balance sheet, uh, profit and loss report, cash flow and so on. Uh, these are not uh, the only accounting softwares that are used. There are many accounting softwares uh, that can be used depending on how big the um, business is, what is the business's model and so on. And also uh, another important tool for financial planning is uh, software planning software, financial planning software, such as PlanGuru and uh, LifePlan, which have some advantages compared to uh, spreadsheet and accounting softwares. Here, uh, I have uh, included some main uh, parts of the financial planning that can be uh, done by using uh, final, uh, spreadsheets. These are organizing financial data, creating financial projection, and comparing scenarios. For example, one scenario would be uh, what happens if you like deposit a certain amount of money in your business or what happens when you uh, get a loan or you have like uh, unexpected high amount expense and so on. All these can be done uh, using the spreadsheets. And uh, another uh, important part of using spreadsheets is uh, they are cost efficient for small businesses. Uh, for example, uh, if you have a small consulting business and you want to create a financial plan using the spreadsheet, you can uh, use several tabs to track your revenues, expenses, and cash flow. And then you just enter your historical data into the spreadsheet. And so you can calculate the revenues, expenses, and cash, cash flow for each month or for uh, three months, six months, one year, and so on. Next, you can create a sales forecast using uh, historical data to predict your future sales. So you first enter uh, the existing data into the spreadsheets, and then uh, you use formulas to calculate revenues and revenue projections for a given period of time. And you can do the same uh, with expense projection by uh, listing all of the expected expenses for a given period of time. And uh, finally, you can use a spreadsheet also to create cash flow projection by subtracting expenses from the revenue projections. So basically, uh, all uh, the forecasting uh, uh, parts that we mentioned today can be done using spreadsheets. But uh, this, of course, depends on uh, how uh, big uh, the business is, uh, also how many financial transactions it has because the spreadsheets may not be very suitable for uh, large businesses that have very large number of 
transactions. Okay, then, uh, as I said, financial planning can be done also using accounting softwares. And these, I would say, that are uh, most widely used because they are, uh, they are designed to help one business deal with the financial planning and all other daily transactions that are related to financials. So financial planning using accounting softwares uh, can be used to manage financial transactions, to generate financial reports, and also to create budgets and forecasting. Compared to the spreadsheets, uh, financial softwares are faster in generating these uh, reports and include less manual work, I would say, uh, in order to generate these reports. Here is an example of uh, how the accounting softwares were used for financial planning. So let's say that you have a small retail business and you want to use accounting software to plan for your business's financial future. So you start by entering all financial transactions, including sales, expenses, payment, bank statements, and so on. Then uh, you use the software to generate financial reports such as the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statements. These reports will help you understand uh, where your business stands and to identify areas where you need to cut costs or invest more or make some other adjustments. Next, you can create a budget for your business based on historical data and uh, see your where your financial goals stand. You can use accounting software to track this progress by making adjustment to your planned budget and your actuals. And finally, you can also use accounting software to create a forecast for the business's future revenues based on historical data and uh, plans for growth. For example, if you plan to uh, also uh, start your business in another city or another country and so on. Lastly, using financial planning softwares. So uh, the benefits of using financial planning softwares are uh, they are automate, automated financial processes. Uh, so financial planning software can automate many financial processing such as uh, budgeting, forecasting, and reporting. Uh, that's why uh, it has advantages compared to uh, the two previous tools. And uh, of course, the more accurate the data is, uh, it can make you make a more informed financial decision. Also, this software provides insight and analyt analytics because financial planning software uh, can provide uh, insights and analytics about uh, financial performance, such as trends in revenues and expenses, uh, which are very, very important as we mentioned today. And uh, it can save lots of time and uh, they can be more efficient if they are uh, generated using a financial planning software. And then also, Another important uh, part is that it allows uh, the collaboration with your team because it's allowed, it allows multiple users to access and to update financial data in uh, real time. Here is an example of the financial 
planning using uh, financial planning software. So for example, you have a small retail business and you want to create a financial plan using financial planning software. First, you start by selecting a software that uh, would be more most useful for your business's needs and budget, of course. And then you input all your, all your financial data there, all the financial transactions, and the software automatically will generate financial reports, such as profit and loss reports, balance sheet, and cash, cash flow statements. So you can use them, these reports to analyze your financial performance and to identify which areas of your business need improvement. Next, you can use the financial forecasting tool to generate sales forecasts and expense projections. So this again will affect our net income. And uh, these financial software use algorithms to predict then the future financial performance based on market trends and historical data. So I would say that they are quite advanced and uh, are quite uh, useful for businesses in order to make uh, a well-informed financial decisions. So again, also you can let uh, other part of your team to uh, update financial data in financial planning software. So uh, at first it will may seem that uh, creating financial plan for businesses is overwhelming as uh, we need to consider many aspects and uh, the surroundings, the, mar uh, the market strategy, competition, uh, to monitor expenses, uh, to see what we can do, how can we improve any areas of our business, how can we increase sales, uh, how can we set the price in order to generate a greater gross profit, uh, so that we can uh, cover all our fixed and uh, variable expenses and lastly generate uh, net income, which we usually seek to maximize. Uh, however, uh, we can like follow uh, these steps in order not to make uh, significant uh, mistakes when we make uh, the financial planning. And this includes uh, understanding our business, setting financial goals, forecasting our financials, creating a budget, managing our cash flow, using financial planning tools, and reviewing and adjusting a financial plan. So, this I would say is not like a static process process or something that uh, we do once and we, we, we just follow, but this is something uh, that is quite dynamic and needs uh, all the time updates, all the time adjustments and uh, uh, all the time information and as much as possible uh, data that uh, we can get in order to make uh, better financial decisions. Here I have included a quote that would uh, capture the importance of uh, financial planning. It's from uh, Benjamin Franklin, which says that uh, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So this again highlights the importance and this can be used in the context of financial planning because we know many examples of the companies that failed to prepare and then it led to uh, insolvency and even to bankruptcy. 
So as a conclusion, I would say that financial planning is crucial for the success and sustainability of small businesses. Ongoing financial planning allows businesses owners to understand their business, to set financial goals, to forecast their financials, create budgets, manage cash flows, and use financial planning tools uh, that we just mentioned effectively in order to uh, not just achieve financial goals, but also to maintain a sustainable business. So these steps that we discussed today are important for small businesses and uh, business owners can create successful financial plans in order to help them achieve their uh, financial goals and also ensure the long-term sustainability for their business because one business may, may be in a good financial position for one year. And then if, uh, if uh, financial planning is failing and we don't consider uh, the important other aspects that we mentioned today, then uh, it may lead uh, to, fun to cash shortfalls and to insolvency. Okay, so if you have any questions or something that would like to discuss at the end of this session, I can see that I have some messages. Okay. How can we minimize our expenses that should not affect our business? Well, there are uh, several ways uh, that we as business owners or as a financial analyst can consider. For example, uh, we can uh, analyze uh, rent expenses, which are fixed expense, and we can see whether we can uh, move to another object or, or another office that would cut these expenses. Or uh, maybe uh, we see that uh, we are spending quite much on marketing campaigns. And we can test whether if we spend less on marketing campaigns or marketing materials, is it affecting our sales or not? If it's not affecting our sales, that it means that uh, we can safely uh, reduce some of the marketing uh, expenses. And also, for example, we can manage uh, our office supplies and uh, see whether uh, we can change the supplier and uh, buy office materials somewhere where it costs us less. It may seem uh, like a little amount will change, but in the long term, it's quite of an effect in uh, net income. Yes, spreadsheets are cost effective for small businesses. I have experience in this aspect. Thanks, Bari. Yes, they are. And uh, this is particularly important for uh, small businesses since they have like uh, limited budget that uh, can spend on like financial softwares or financial planning softwares. They may be quite uh, expensive for small businesses. But as long as there are not uh, many transactions and uh, the business is not uh, very large, the spreadsheets can be used uh, effectively. Okay, and I think that uh, someone... Uh, I have another question here. Yes. Um, Emmanuel asked, is the financial planning software easily and readily available for all? to us access at will? 
can you repeat the question? I didn't hear you very well. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. so uh, the financial planning software is easily and readily available for all to access at will. No, actually, they are they are not. Uh, most of these uh, software needs to be uh, paid. And also uh, the use of this software depends on the uh, level of knowledge that uh, your team has, because not all uh, uh, employees in the company may be, I would say, tra trained to use uh, these financial software plannings, even for uh, financial softwares like QuickBooks, even though it's easy to use, they are QuickBooks is easy to use still, you would need to have a prior knowledge on using these softwares. Thank you. Uh, we have a Dr. Ripti uh, yeah. he raised his hand. So yes. let's see what he has to say. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Uh, I want uh, to remind ourselves, COVID-19, that many companies lost and left the market. I want to talk about uh, an important point, which is preparing for unexpected expansion or changes in the market. What does the administration or management so in this case, if it happens again. Okay. Antonella, maybe you heard the question because I I I was yeah. not able to I understand. I want to remind ourselves of it nicely, that many companies lost and left the market. I want to talk about an important point, which is preparing for unexpected expenses or change in the market. What does the administration or management do in this case if it happens again? Okay, so as far as I understood, uh, you uh, highlighted the importance of the financial planning because many businesses failed because of the lack of financial planning and what is the role of the management in order to uh, monitor this process. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, I want to know the management prepare. Yes. Prepare what? To the management. Yes. Because of the emergence in the world, like uh, COVID-19. What's yes. the place or what the four cases the management can do? Yes. So, uh... Yes, the, the role of management is crucial in financial planning and it's the management that uh, uh, like uh, initiates uh, activities to use these minor financial tools that, that we mentioned today. Uh, most of the businesses uh, create like uh, reserves, I would say, uh, to manage these unexpected costs, but it's also, I would like to say that it's, it's quite uh, impossible to, to, to effectively forecast uh, something like uh, COVID-19 that you mentioned, because I don't think that uh, companies have seen this coming and uh, the cost was so high that uh, many companies didn't expect this and uh, came to a um, position of uh, shortfalls in cash. 
but again the role of the management is crucial in uh, identifying these uh, unexpected circumstances as early as possible in order to uh, uh, plan for the cash forecasting and uh, such uh, such situations i hope i you received uh, uh, the answer to your question yeah. thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes and let's see monday has another question let's see what he yes. has to say yes yes Sorry, we can't hear you. I think that the microphone is muted. Yes. You can also write your question on the chat if you if your microphone is not working. I have another question here on the chat. Um, it's from it's from Ivy. Uh, how can I manage my cash flow effectively? Yes, uh, we uh, mentioned today the main uh, parts to uh, manage the cash flow effectively. Uh, we talked about uh, the sale forecasting, uh, expenses forecasting, and uh, profit forecasting, uh, then uh, based on the information, we can use uh, financial uh, tools, financial software in order to uh, better uh, do the financial planning while always considering uh, and adjusting it uh, according to the changes in the market competition and macroeconomic factors. Uh, we have another question from Frederick. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, yes. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for the wonderful highlights and the wonderful description of both that is taking care of the macro and the microeconomics. Uh, but I would want to just know, with all the availing factors that you have um, uh, prescribed and presented, do we have an, um, like a fixed period that we can give to a startup business or a small business uh, as a review process? Because I think most of the factors that have provided need a review of which, do we have a, an uh, ample fixed period that you can give uh, just to make sure that things are Learning smooth uh, to avoid the fall of the company and the have... backlash. That... Uh, did you say that do we have a fixed? Uh... Because I I couldn't hear you well. Yeah, I'm saying do we have a fixed period that you can give as a review period in the process of uh, analyzing the factors that you've presented to avoid uh, bankruptcy or to avoid businesses falling, because it's, it's more, more practical to small and medium uh, entrepreneurs to face such kind yes. of challenges because they might have some limitations of cash. Mm -hmm. Yes, and some, a lot of limitations. So well, what I want to know is, do you have a fixed period that you can give as a review time frame for them to avoid such a backlash that can come? Yes. Uh, well, for, for, for small businesses, uh, since they have, um, I would I would say, uh, um, not so so many financial transactions, they can uh, basically rely on uh, mostly on historical data, and uh, make uh, the financial 
plan for a period of one year or uh, three years in order to uh, tackle and track uh, all the important parts of uh, their uh, cash in and cash outs in order not to come to a position of uh, bankruptcy and uh, insolvency. And we have two more questions um, by Charles. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, good, good evening, I'm in Nairobi. Hi. Uh, uh, globalization has it that the, the globe is a, is, a, is, a, is a village and uh, m uh, most of these uh, uh, goods and services are much nearer and, uh, and, and, and closer than before. Uh, yes. Some countries like mine uh, are struggling with enhancing uh, mobile money transfer systems for uh, small, uh, uh, small business uh, entrepreneurs and, uh, uh, and all that. Now, I just wanted to maybe if you can highlight uh, the challenges, how then uh, does this affect forecasting? And uh, as one of our, one of our um, uh, participants uh, uh, compared this to the to the time when we had uh, COVID nineteen, uh, the small businesses and uh, forecasting, and uh, although governments are trying to improve on uh, on uh, uh, money transfer in terms because. Uh, you can do it on your hands and all that. And even the, the, the financial software companies are, uh, are coming up with, uh, with the softwares that can be operated from mobile phones and, uh, and all that. And even the, the Excel itself is improving in terms of uh, uh, data analysis and even vi uh, visualization. But the challenge still remains in forecasting yes. and, and, the, and the global events. Uh, that uh, that happen unexpectedly, like the wars, the the the, the pandemics, and, and and all that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, a very good question, and also uh, very good insights because uh, yes, the globalization is affecting uh, very much small businesses, and uh, we can not uh, just. Uh, take into account uh, the market in one country and uh, make the financial planning based on this information. Uh, because, for example, if uh, we are like selling products and they are they can be imported by uh, from another country and could be sold in our country with a lower price. So uh, this would this would be a challenge also in uh, in making a financial plan. However, what uh, businesses usually do is that uh, they don't rely only on one product, and uh, this this have shown to be a great uh, source of uh, uh, ensuring uh, revenues from different products. And uh, this this would be also this would be important to uh, generate more sustainable income. Uh, based on the data, the companies that were relied only on uh, one good or two goods or one service or two services have struggled with financial planning, and also have struggled in generating uh, revenues because of the competition. And uh, companies, on the other hand, uh, that have sold and they have a variety of uh, products they, they offer or services that they offer, uh, have been generating more sustainable uh, revenues. And also it was, I would say, easier for them to do a financial for forecasting. As 
as for uh, the unexpected uh, events like uh, COVID-19 or worse, this is uh, this is something that uh, most of the companies uh, take into account, but uh, the money or the or the cash uh, that would be necessary in these cases is quite huge, and it's not efficient to like make reserves for these uh, for these such cases. For example, we have now uh, many companies in Ukraine uh, that. Uh, actually they uh, declared bankruptcy also in other countries because of the effects of the war in Ukraine. So this is this is something that uh, we should have in mind but we cannot like incorporate it always in financial planning. But we can seek another strategies like uh, monitoring co costs and uh, preparing for what strategies, if uh, they are something that uh, we can do, and also to uh, uh, offer and sell a variety of products instead of concentrating only, only on uh, one or two products and services. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another question by Emmanuel. Let's see what he has to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for the uh, presentation. Yes, just want to ask, uh, based on what uh, the former uh, person that raised a question before the last one, I think uh, the answer did not come out clearly. I think he was asking, uh, what, uh, when is the best time to do a financial planning review that will be effective uh -huh. for the business? Is it uh, yes. yearly, it was a year, should it be every month? You know, just want to know yeah, that's yeah, best yeah, yeah. time. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you. Usually businesses do uh, their financial planning at the beginning of the year for the next period. Uh, the financial planning is mostly done on a yearly basis. Uh, but then in analytics, it uh, can include monthly budgeting. This is particularly important to uh, track expenses and to see whether we are uh, like in huge amount of the, what we have planned. Uh, so uh, for uh, big companies, they do financial planning even for five years or 10 years while uh, small uh, businesses tend to uh, do the financial planning for one year or two years. Uh, so the best uh, period to adjust financial planning is the beginning of the year for the next year. We have another question uh, by Galal. Let's see what they have to say. Have a nice day for everybody. Uh, Hi. First of all, I want to ask on a small question, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, when you start this uh, conversation, because I talk him from uh, Saudi Arabia, and the different time uh, as I manage is uh, supposed uh, starting since around 15 minutes. But I, I guess now this conclusion, and there is uh, many questions about this topic. So that's meaning uh, you finish from this. Uh, uh, conversation or from this uh, episode or uh, I, I, I have a mistake in this. Yes, so uh, today we talked about uh, financial planning for small businesses. 
we mentioned uh, the main parts uh, which uh, a small business needs to consider to do the financial planning, like uh, planning for sales, for expenses, and uh, for uh, profit, uh, to do the budgeting and to do the cash flow planning, then uh, tools that can be used to, to uh, do this forecast. And we went through the checklist of uh, important uh, features uh, that uh, financial planning has in order to uh, plan for, for uh, to make uh, informed uh, financial decisions that are important for a sustainable business. Okay, that's meaning uh, you start uh, since uh, one hour, maybe four hours. Did you start it yes. Uh, yes, you, the class will be available in the students section if you want to see later, if you miss something. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, okay, now let me ask only one question, please. Uh, okay. uh, did you have uh, some model for, uh, for uh, cash flow, for example, in Excel sheet, or uh, so you have some procedures we have to follow? Because uh, Yes, there are you... many. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, there are any uh, Excel uh, spreadsheets that are available uh, for free in Google that you can download and uh, you can adjust them based on the needs of your business and you just have to enter your data and they are quite useful, I would say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we have a question from Teresa. Let's make this the last question of the day. Yes. Good, good evening. Uh, uh, it's evening, yeah. I have a short question uh, that I want to ask. Like, um, we talked of uh, uh, financial planning. Mm -hmm. Then my question is, does lack of enough capital in, in starting a business affect uh, financial planning? Or uh, like, for instance, if I'm starting a business and I don't have enough capital, but I've decided to, to start with what I have, does it affect mm -hmm. in planning for the business? As if you are a startup, then you might consider uh, the sources that you plan to deposit in your uh, business. And also you might consider a small loans for, for, from the, for the beginning that you can like ap apply uh, to a bank in order to uh, get. This depends on how much uh, sources are your, is your initial like capital that you will invest in your company. And of course, this is like a starting capital that will affect your cash flow. It, if it's in enough to cover the expenses that you plan uh, to make within a year, then you might consider not uh, applying for a loan. But if you see that you will have cash shortfalls, then you might consider all the, uh, also other sources of uh, money in for your company. Thank you. Well, that's okay. it for everyone. Thank you, Vihare. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, everyone. Let's see, let's see you tomorrow at the same time, 10 a.m. Uh, for another subject.